Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tennessee Fance and today we are doing a book review. And it's a book review about one of my favorite Robert E. Howard characters. I think we all know who that is at this point in time, and that's Coney and the Barbarian. What we're looking at specifically is this. This is the 2019 relaunch of the Marvel flagship of Coney and the Barbarian. Now, this was done right after Marvel had taken the rights back from Dark Horse. Now, Dark Horse and, and if you've watched my other videos, you already know how I think about this. I think Dark Horse did a really good job of a lot of Conan the Barbarian stories. So it's interesting that at this point in time, Marvel takes back the license to publish the Conan the Barbarian comics, and they launch this series. Now, I never read this series when it came out, and it's a little late now because we're all the way out in 2022, and timeliness of this is actually kind of funny because we're literally months away from Marvel losing the license again. But, Let's take a look back here. Let's ask ourselves, what is the 2019 relaunch of this flagship, this flagship, actually worth reading? Well, let's find out. All right, we're back. Let's get to this. Now, here is the book we're looking at today. Now, I would be amiss if I did not do the obligatory YouTube comment right now and say, listen, if you like Robert E. Howard content and you like the book reviews that I'm doing, by all means, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. I would appreciate it. It helps the channel. There, that is now done. Let's get to this. So, this is the hardcover collection, the first 12 issues of this 2019 relaunch. Now, as I mentioned, I never read this when this came out. Um, I actually did pick up issue one when it came out. And the reason I picked up issue one was because there was a particular cover on it that I thought was really fancy and cool. So I picked it up. Never read it, set it aside, and said to myself, self, read this later when it's collected. Well, it's collected. And here I have the first 12 issues. Now, I'm going to have to get the next one, which is the issues that come after this, because I believe they went all the way up to issue 25. Don't hold me to that. I think it was issue 25, which I think legacy number-wise takes them up to 300 issues of Conan the Barbarian. Moot point. So, start with number one. Let's start with admin, shall we? Now, ignore the post-it notes. Those are for me, so I know what the heck I'm talking about when I'm going through this. But, as we all know, dust jackets are really nice. They're really fancy. People like dust jackets. It's front and the back, high gloss. This is a heavy book, too, by the way in case anybody's wondering. So this was made with some quality paper. Uh, but, as we all know, when I read the books, I set aside the dust jacket, like such. I take it off, and I say, go away. And I read it like that. Now, for any of you who have watched my other videos, you know I like maps. This, I think, was really, really smart. And this is a theme that goes throughout the entire book. I'm going to come back to this in a second. But I like what they did here, was they stuck the actual map on it. Aquilonia, where King Conan later ruled. You got the sea with the black coast over here. Very cool. I like how this whole thing works. I like the fact that I can look at this. And it's interesting. If you read the hardcover versions of the, um, the Ablaze issues, uh, what's kind of funny is they have this map printed on the inside of them, but it's en français. Um, so for those of us in Canada who actually speak French, uh, that's fine. For our American colleagues, that may be an issue. But anyways, that I like. This I thought was rather nicely done. It's not just something where you end up with just, you know, a blank title and then the gold boss on Conan or something like that. I thought that was really cool. So, administration-wise, I like this. Another piece of administration I like in this story, and I'm going to get to one of these right now as soon as I find one. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Here. Um, the beginning of every issue, they did one of these in it, which actually has the map on it. And unlike this map, this map is a black map, which I'm going to talk to why later. But what they would do on them is when they talked about each story, they would highlight the area specifically in the map that it relates to in red. Again, as a guy like me who's trying to actually understand, well, where the heck is this in Conan's world? That was a really cool feature. I really enjoyed that. I thought they did a good job of that. So two points to them for that. Now, that's the administration of the book sort of set aside. So administration-wise, I like this book. Let's talk about the story, the writing, and the art now. Now, art-wise, I'm just going to set this out right now. This was stunning. This was visually stunning. I have zero negative comments about the art to make. Uh, you'll see the art as we go through the pages and I start talking through the story in a couple seconds, but art-wise, this was well done. Good job, Marvel. You picked the right artist on this one. They had the right sense of the character, and it changed throughout. You saw different art styles as you went through. Uh, they all did various styles that matched the theme of the story that they were telling. Good job. Now, story-wise, what is this story? Now, this was a real challenge, I think, for Marvel, and I'm going to talk to this point here. They've already done, through Savage Sword of Conan, Savage Tales, Conan the Barbarian, King Conan, 
they've written pretty much every story they could do. Now, they haven't done all of them, but they've written pretty much every story out there that could be done that's a Robert E. Howard story. So the story in the lifetime of Conan is written out. So what do you do when you relaunch this thing when you get the license back? Well, what's the challenge here to the writer? Well, the challenge to the writer is how do I make this interesting? They did do a good job of making this interesting. I'll tell you how they did this. The whole point to this story is it's two-pronged. This is a story of the death of Conan. Now, I'm not throwing in a spoiler there. That's just what it is. It is a story of the death of Conan. So you're saying, well, hold on. How the heck do they make an entire story about the death of Conan? That'd be somewhat anticlimactic. It'd be kind of dull, too. We all know where this is going. But it's also the story of Conan and his relationship throughout his entire life with the Crimson Witch, who is somebody who he really has no clue who it is. And I'll show you. Bippity bippity bip. This is the actual cover of the issue that I bought, uh, and I bought it because I really liked it. This is the Crimson Witch. And it's interesting because what Marvel did and what the writers did on this one, which was really, really smart, was they walked through the whole story and started off with a story of Conan in his youth and his encounter with the Crimson Witch. Uh, the Crimson Witch has a, a keen interest in Conan, uh, specifically because she wants to sacrifice him as a blood sacrifice to her god, who is Razazel, I think is how you pronounce the name. Hold on here, let's, let's go on over here. Here's, here's the actual sacrifice scene right here, where you're getting introduced to, okay, you're going to be sacrificed. These are all the people that she's killed in the past, all in an effort to try to get somebody whose blood is strong enough as a survivor that's worthy to be sacrificed to her god. And once her god takes over, her god is going to then take over the entire world, uh, massacring everybody in their wake. Very interesting story here with this Crimson Witch. Well, Long story short, because uh, we, we can get to this, uh, long story short, Conan breaks free and, uh, well, as you can see here, uh, and then moves on to kill the Crimson Witch after she's animated all of these corpses to get him. Uh, he actually stops her from stabbing him in the head with literally his hand, which I thought was pretty gritty, and then cuts her head off and away you go. Uh, so she dies. And to Conan's mind, because he then sets fire to this entire temple, that is the end of the story. Well, that would be the end of the story, but what happens is they then do a time jump forward to the stories of King Conan. So you've had the youth of Conan here. And this is, again, the first issue. You then get into these two kids who are out basically being carrion collectors on a battlefield that King Conan has just lived, and they mention the name Rezazel in it. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean, Rezazel? Walk me through this again. And, of course, out of nowhere comes the Crimson Witch. Now, this is years later in Conan's life. Like, you're talking 20, maybe 30 years later in his life at this point in time. She comes back, and they literally stab Conan, and you're thinking, okay, is that the end? Like, holy poop, what the heck just happened? And then they start jumping through the whole life of Conan. So Conan is here, they close the book off, two knives in his back, and you're, be aware, though, and of course this was marketed that way, this is the story of the death of Conan. You're now going, okay, this is going to be rather short-lived series, what, two issues? Well, no. Now they start going through the rest of it. And it's kind of interesting, because now they start walking through the life of Conan. Like, that gap that we talked about there, where he was young, killed her, to the point where he's old, king, you're going to start seeing some story. So, early. And this is what I spoke to with regards to the maps. There's a sample of the map right there. Pictures Wilderness. This is him as an early barbarian story. And he's out, basically, fighting Picts. Uh, he has to kill giant snakes. Uh, and each one of these stories is interesting because in the story, Conan learns and, and grows. So they're showing character growth throughout Conan's life of the things that he learned as he was moving along. Pretty interesting story. I personally like this one. I hate snakes. Uh, so having Conan run around killing giant snakes, um, literally, I could feel my own sense of, I don't know, self-preservation kicking in as I'm reading this. And even though they're animated snakes, I'm still like, me as you're reading through them. Needless to say, he wins. End of story. You get a story of Conan the Thief because obviously he wasn't a barbarian. He then went into the, civil, the civilized lands and became a thief uh, and became a mercenary. Well, he's being hung here. And it, it's kind of interesting because he's being captured. And at this point, in this point, I'm not going to ruin this story. This one was rather clever. I really enjoyed this one. We're just going to set that aside. Okay, good story, good story. I liked it. You get the story of King Conan. Now, this is early in his reign as a king. And he's bored. Uh, he's finding himself sick. And remember, I talked about the various art styles. This is a really dark story that went with the whole idea of Conan 
when he's brooding and he's like, oh, I don't like being a king. Oh, I don't like all this responsibility. Oh, this is a real pain in the ass. And, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, they show him again growing here. And what he recognizes when he makes friends with his lion is that perhaps he should be going out and doing barbarianing again. And he starts doing it, obviously, he wears a mask and goes out. Almost like a, um, a Conan, or Borean-y superhero. Kind of cool. Um, Conan the pirate. There's your map. There's the red. He's in the Southern Sea. And he's on a ship where he's actually, as a mercenary, bringing this back, and it's cursed. Uh, blood touches it, and the next thing you know, the entire thing becomes cursed. Everybody dies, and these giant monsters start coming out of nowhere. Sharks with tentacles. And, and spiders like, that's, that's pretty darn horrifying. Uh, and they talk about him surviving that, uh, which was basically a trial of starvation. How was he going to survive if he wasn't going to eat the flesh of the other things? Uh, what do we got over here? Um, this is where he is a desert raider. Again, map, red, very good, I liked it. Story of him basically learning, to, well, showing, not trusting authority, showing that he's learned the better part of valor is to actually live to fight another day. Interesting story. This particular story here, I, and I'll tell you this in full disclosure, I think that the story of Conan and his pirate queen, Bellet, is possibly one of the most beautiful stories um, that, quite frankly, was ever done on Conan. I, I think that that whole character development of him through there and the loss of Bellet uh, to his supernatural power, I've always thought that was fantastic. This is a story, and it's so weird because you don't know why he's doing this. Um, but I've set this one aside, and I've just called this the Conan Revenge story. I'm not going to spoil this story, uh, but this is a year thought, like years thought out plan, and it shows how smart Conan is a planner to lure out somebody from all of their guards so he can finally get revenge, not for himself, but for Bellet, who at this point in time in the story has been long dead. Fantastic story. That's a really good one. I enjoyed that. So then we come back to, okay, what is this one over here? Uh, oh, oh, this is a good one. Conan in his youth, so now we're jumping sort of backwards and forwards this time. Conan returning to Samaria. Interesting story on this one, because, and, and this sort of speaks to, if anybody's reading the current King Conan story, uh, Thothamon, uh, who is a villain that Conan fights throughout his entire career. If you've read the comics, you know it. If you've read the magazines, you know it. And it's interesting that in this story, Marvel sort of started this tongue-in-cheek thing, uh, where every time Conan was fighting Thothamon, he's always like, I'm sorry, who are you again? And, and it's kind of funny, because even later in the King Conan's story, stories that have come out right now, uh, he's on an island with Thothamon, and the first thing he says to him is, I think I recognize your name. Thothamon hates Conan, vehemently hates Conan, to the point where he literally cursed everybody in Conan's home village, just in case Conan ever returned. Just in case he ever returns, so that they would turn into blood, blood sucking monsters and try to kill him. Which is fascinating. And, and at the end of the day, of course, he ends up killing the whole cure and everything's fine. But interesting that throughout this, Conan's like, when he recognizes the name, he's like, oh yeah, thought them out. I think I know that guy. Quite funny. Quite funny. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Uh, where have we got here? Oh, oh, this is a good one. Okay. So you've had a whole bunch of stories up until this point in time. And I apologize if I'm saying where we got here because there was a lot covered in this. So that's hence the post-it notes and why I'm reading them as I'm going. So this story was rather interesting. Throughout the whole thing, you've been seeing a lot of non-Robert E. Howard content. You've been seeing a lot of the adventures that were sort of fill-in stories that are sort of adding to the Robert E. Howard, let's call it pantheon of what happened. This is an interesting one because Conan finds himself trapped inside a giant, for lack of a better word, almost like a Tremors earthworm, uh, where every, a bunch of other people are trapped as well. But this is, earthworm is a god, and what it does is it punishes the people inside it by making them relive fighting their greatest enemies. So for the majority of the people who are just your standard folks, that's not that bad. Like their greatest enemies might be, I don't know, the farmer next door who cheated them out of maybe an acre of land. In Conan's case, that's a lot worse. Uh, so this is an interesting one because throughout the story, he's literally re-battling all of the big baddies that he fought on all the Robert E. Howard content. Like there's Thack. Uh, from Rogues in the House, uh, Tower of the Elephant. Uh, we didn't really fight, by the way, uh, but he does have to fight him in this. Uh, fascinating that this is all going through, and this snake, by the way, grows a mask, and that's part of a Robert E. Howard story as well. He fights all those and then gets out of that particular thing, which is kind of neat. So you've now seen the story and them jumping back and forth through the Conan mythos of, of where we're at. 
And then what they do is they jump back to, okay, let's get back to the present now. Okay, we got to kill Conan because that's what we were doing. And you get to the actual death of Conan. Uh, again, a good story. Here he is. He's being sacrificed. Here's, the, here's this queen. Uh, and what they do is they now say, because you've read all these issues now, and you've sort of said to yourself, okay, well, we relived the life of Conan and all these stories. He killed this lady literally in his youth. What happened along the way? Well, I'll tell you what happened along the way. She had children, all right, two children, uh, which they will later call demon children, but she's raising them like a loving mother. There they are. Uh, sort of a warped sense of reality what they should be doing. Uh, but obviously when they watch Conan come in and then cut the head off their mother, well, that, that, that's pretty scary stuff and traumatic for the kids. The kids then go on to fix the mother, put out the fire. By Fix the mother, I mean by sewing the head back on, because she's a witch. She can survive that sort of stuff. Uh, and then they go on to realize, okay, we now need to keep Conan alive long enough to the point where his blood is actually strong enough to do what he needs to do. So these demon kids literally go through their entire lives with this let's call it ghoul of a, of a witch mother, protecting them. Again, raising themselves to just continue along and watch Conan. So in all the adventures that you've now seen that we walk through, in every single one, you'll see the kids there. He's a desert raider. There's the kids. When he was on that crazy boat with the tentacle monsters, there's the kids stabbing away at the tentacle monsters. It's absolutely fascinating. It's weird because throughout it, and there's the, him as the king when he was being that Avenger type person, there's the kids watching him again. Very interesting watching this uh, this whole thing follow through, which I thought was really, really clever. And obviously things move along, and at the end of the day, it's a bit of a fight. Conan puts up a little bit of a struggle. You're thinking, okay, this whole thing's going to happen again. But no, he ends up getting, you know, crushed by rocks. He's dead. And you're thinking, okay, now we're done the series. Hmm. You'd be wrong. This is where it gets really screwed up. Black cover on this one and a black map on this one. Why? Because Conan is dead. Conan literally gets into an argument with Krom. His own god gets into a fight with Krom and cursed and thrown out of what you would call Conan's version of Valhalla. I'm not going to tell you why. I'm not going to tell you how it happens. That's how he comes back. So he does legit die. But because he's such a stubborn ass, picks a fight with his own god, because once he actually meets his own god, he's so disappointed in him that he gets cursed and when you find out what that curse is then you suddenly go oh that's why he survives everything yeah yeah and i'm, I'm going to show you the panel literally gets cursed and booted out of basically his version of heaven comes back alive two knives sticking out of his chest and away you go so you're thinking, okay, so he died, and this Rezazel guy is going to come up, and he's going to take over the role, and he just comes back out of nowhere, and away you go. The last issue on this one, the issue 12, literally was just perfect barbarian madness. Conan is legitimately pissed off. His son comes out of nowhere, Khan, Conan II, uh, with a bunch of his royal guard, and they literally spend all their time killing everything in their way to finally, and obviously finishes off the two demon children, and cuts this tendril and back this monster goes into the bits of hell where it's supposed to go with its own two demon children and he says if you want me by the way you can just come and find me on my throne i'll be waiting classic way to close this one off conan's laughing riding off obviously not dying from the two knife wounds in his chest because why because Krom has legitimately kicked him out of his afterlife fascinating story so you're up to 12 issues and you're thinking whoa what the heck? so legitimately as you can tell from my my long recap of the story this was an awesome story this was an awesome piece of conan work and yes marvel totally did an amazing job on this now the next issues after this i can't talk on i haven't read them yet but i will get my hands on those and i'll read those later for you but for my two cents if you were out there and you said to yourself hey you know what i got 35 dollars american or 44 dollars canadian as the uh, exchange rate goes in the back of this book um you want to go and find this this is a great read to sit down and read it once in an afternoon it was really funny uh the demon children added that comedic piece of genius that followed throughout the story and it was a fantastic piece of learning about the character as he's growing old to the point where he was that king conan where he was the king conan who's dead and literally meets his god and is so pissed off because he has learned a sense of responsibility to people that he gets booted out of his own afterlife. So funny. 
So you want to pick this one up. That's my two cents on this one. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this one. The next one we're going to do on this is probably going to be a Robert E. Howard Battle Royale. I'm going to try to find copies of Tower of the Elephant uh, from a couple of different sources. And we're going to do a comparison on those and think about what we, whether we liked them and which one we thought did the best version. I hope you enjoyed this one, everybody. I will see you in our next video.